Let's look at more ways to communicate optimization problems. In Python, there's a library called SciPy for scientific Python, and it has a bunch of optimization methods, and one of them is for linear programming. So how do you communicate a linear program to this routine to have it solve it? You have to give it a vector of costs. That's not a surprise. Uh, and it just figures you have as many decision variables as you have costs. And then you have to give it a matrix uh, that's the right-hand side of your constraint, and then a vector of the, uh, sorry, the left-hand side, and a vector for the right-hand side uh, for some inequality constraints and some equality constraints. So in Python, you have to generate the matrix, uh, and it might, that matrix might have a lot of structure to it. Let's take a look at a few um, structural things. Oh, well, one way, if you have a very small program, you can just hard code the, uh, the constraint matrix and the costs. So that could work reasonably well if it's a very small problem. Um, but let's take a look at some larger problems. This is a technical report from 1987 uh, from one of the people who ended up writing one of the major uh, solution code, LP solution codes called CPLEX. Um, so he took some time to print out um, uh, versions of the constraint matrices. Here black shows that there's a non-zero coefficient and white shows that the coefficient is just zero in the matrix. So you can see that these matrices have a fair bit of structure to them. They're not just randomly zeros and ones. They're not uh, completely dark with an, with a non-zero entry in every location. Um, so, so, so maybe some surprising structure there. A lot of these are going to be something like there's something happening in, happening in this time period, and then some of that flows into the next time period, etc. Again, some kind of sequential structure there. Here you might have something like there's a bunch of stuff going on at this factory and a bunch of stuff going on at this factory, and then there's some communications between the factories or flows of stuff. Uh, so the, these are really common kind of structures in linear programming matrices. But it would not be particularly fun to fill this all out by hand, for example, in a spreadsheet, or to write for loops to put in all the right things in all the right locations. There used to be programs like that called matrix generators, um, but these days there's a better solution. We'll talk about that in a sec. Let me show you some other ones a little more colorful. Um, so this is an Italian railway scheduling problem. Um, this one is probably artificial, but it's really pretty. Uh, this one is placing queens on a 30 by 30 chessboard, so each attack queen attacks at most one other queen. Um, kind of a fun recreational math problem. Uh, here's a basketball scheduling problem. Here's a workforce scheduling problem. Um, uh, let's see, uh, scheduling ocean freight shipments. Um, a production optimization model from a major oil company. Uh, lots and lots of structure here. Um, people have gathered instances of linear programs. In this case, it's mixed integer linear programs, so some integers, some variables, and possibly some non-integer variables. And they just make collections of these for people to try their solution codes on to see if they can solve them or how quickly they solve them. And for each entry in this uh, huge database, it just goes on and on, um, they have details about each one, and then also a little picture of the constraint matrix. So that's kind of fun. So now that we've seen that there's often a lot of structure to linear program uh, matrices, and we want a way to generate that structure without having to write for loops and everything, uh, in the next video we'll talk about what to do.